for the chaos to come. And that's when you know that God is doing a new thing. And I know somebody's watching today and you think that my life is in a chaotic situation and I'm depressed and I don't even know which way to go. No, you've been set up for a miracle. You've been set up for change. That's right. The reviving of who you're going to be and the reviving of your situation just stepped in and it rolled in on the chariot of chaos. And that's why the Bible said in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. Because this is the will of God concerning you. And you're saying, I don't know about that. I don't know if this is the will of God concerning me. Well, I do. Because I believe the scripture when it said, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. And to those that are called according to his purpose. All of it is working together for you, not against you. The only way that you would not see that it's working uh, uh, for you instead of working against you. It's when you don't know which side you're standing on. But when you're standing on the side of the word, you know that this is going to come out to my advantage point. Amen and amen. I know that's the truth. I don't know who's watching today, but I believe that this word have come prophetically for you. And it has you in mind and your circumstance in mind and your situation in mind. And I'm here to tell you that God is doing a new thing on the inside of you. That's the declaration today that I feel so strongly to, uh, to uh, declare that God is doing a new thing inside of you. I just want you to believe it. And even if you can't believe it, it's okay because I got enough belief for you and me. Amen. I believe for you. That's the scripture too. It, it, it says that when we don't have the faith to believe, that he called people to believe for you. And I'm on this line today for that very reason. Because I believe God for you. Uh -huh. I'm going to believe him until you grab a hope to your own belief. How about that? I ain't going to turn loose. I'm going to stay right here because I know what God is saying. Today, I, my subject, and I, I, I have to go to a scripture today, um, if you all don't mind. Um, uh, I want to go to a scripture today in the book of uh, Daniel, and I'm going to the book of Job. And our subject today is, 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 is very, very powerful because it, it struck me deeply. I was sitting and reading before the broadcast came on, and um, I started looking at uh, what God was saying. I just sat there with pad and paper, and I just said to the Lord, what would you have me to say to your people today? Um, and he began to talk to me about several things. And so I'm going to just go as he gave it to me. Um, the first thing he began to say is that you have to know where to get your inspiration from. Um, most people are not inspired the way they need to because you are looking for inspiration from outside stimuli. I just said something right there. You're looking for inspiration from outside stimuli. In other words, you can't feel like you want to feel because you need somebody or people to come and encourage you. But the Bible said that there came a point in David's life and I believe that some of you are at that point now where you have to begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. You have to begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. Now, I know some of you think that that's difficult, but it's not as hard as you think it is, especially if you don't know the power behind what you are doing. Sometimes we feel like we are left alone and that people walk away from us. And in them walking away from us, we are offended. But by the same token, people walk away from you. And when you really look at you, you're still here. You're still here. And the very fact that you had enough power to turn this broadcast on without their permission, without you inquiring of them, without them encouraging you to do so, it is a direct indication 
of the power that you possess on the inside of you with the help of your God. Are you hearing me? We have to look at several things. And the reason why I believe that God took me to this scripture was because sometimes we don't know how to move forward in our dream as it, rela as it relates to um, maneuvering through our society. Because some of you I'm talking to, you have very, very, very powerful gifts and very, very powerful uh, dreams. And some of you that I'm talking to, uh, God has even given you witty inventions and things that, that you know, you want to get done. And um, you don't understand why it's not being done. It's not being done because you have not met the divine connection yet. You have not met the divine connection. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but a lot of things that God is going to do in your life, he's not going to do it through people that you already know. He's going to do it through people that he's introducing you to. Because the people that he's introducing you to will not be the people that's trying to control you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, that's why the devil tried to make the, make the whole Facebook thing go off and just blinked off for no reason. Because he knows what he already know. I'm coming for him today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it won't be in the people that you already know because the vision and the dream is from a divine place. And so therefore, God has already lined up divine people. That's already, that they're already working on stuff and don't even know why they're working on it. Because they're waiting to meet you. The scripture that backs that up is when it was time for a culture change. And it was time for a change in a belief system. My God, I feel his presence. When it was time for a culture change and a time for a change in a belief system. God, the Bible said Peter went up on the rooftop. And he went up there and he was hungry, but the Lord took him up in a trance and told him there was a man named Cornelius in another town and I want you to go to him. And Peter was arguing with God because he saw a vision of a dream of a sheep coming down with animals in it that he knew from a Jewish perspective they were not supposed to touch. And so his thoughts were, I know you're not calling us to eat meat. So when God referred to uh, the Gentile generation, Peter's prejudice came up. So what we're dealing with in the earth today is not something that just came. It was back in the Bible days as well. Peter's prejudice came up and he felt like because um, they were Jewish and Jesus was with them and he was one of their own. How dare you in, in, insist upon me going to give what we have? To somebody that is not of our culture. Black Lives Matter is not new. It's been going on. It's, it's happening in the Jewish culture. With the Holocaust. It's not nothing new. But the answer is the same answer. I don't care what comes up. The answer is the same answer. And how things are resolved. And how things are brought together. It's when other people come out of their culture. And get in the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is love. So what we're dealing with here is a spiritual matter. Hatred is a spirit. Prejudice is a spirit. Arrogance is a spirit. Entitlement is a spirit. The spirit of control is a spirit. And if we are spiritual people, we need to understand that what we're dealing with is spirit. And you cannot deal with a spiritual thing in a natural manner. It will not work. Because when you come after something that is spiritual in a natural manner, the spirit already has control over the natural. So you will always be empowered. You will always be overpowered. You can't win. You can't win when you're trying to fight a spirit in the flesh. If a demon is trying to come after me and kill me and I pick up a pop bottle to try to hit it. No, that demon is gaining strength from the pit of hell. That demon have been, have been sent to kill a prophet. Do you honestly think that he would let a stick stop him? Or he would let a bottle stop him? No, he will not. You have to fight spirit with spirit. And when you get in the spirit of God, there is no competition. There is no competition. No demon can stand against the power of God. I don't 
don't care how big it is. That's why when David went down there and he saw his brothers warring with Goliath, little old David with no weapons in his hand because the armor was too big for him. They tried to put it on him and it was too big for him. He said, I don't fight this way. But he looked at Goliath and said, who are you to defy the kingdom of God? Who are you? Who do you think you are? But because he was a worshiper, because he was an intercessor, because he stayed in the face of God and he knew how big his God was, when he saw a giant, the giant was not a giant to him because he lived in the face of the real giant. Are you hearing God today? Are you hearing God today? That's why no situation, I don't care what you're dealing with, you get in the spirit and that's a wrap. The devil can't do nothing with a person that walk in the spirit of God. You can't stop a person when they decide to get in the spirit of God. When they decide to use God as their armor. When they decide to use the word of God as the way they fight in the spirit. You can't do nothing with a person like that. You can't control a person's destiny when they decide to trust God as their strength. Something is really wrong with you if you think that. And that's the problem. We think we are the decision makers as to what goes on in the earth realm. But God already got this thing planned out. He already allowed the devil to act the fool that he acted. Because the chaos is being, being uh, 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 put into the earth realm so the people can turn around and say, where is my God? My God from Zion. Are you hearing the Lord today? And one by one, what do you see? What do you see all over Facebook? What do you see all over the media? media? Oh, we need prayer. We need prayer. Really? Oh, we, we, we're praying for, for uh, this and we're praying for that. And we're praying for the officers. Have you ever heard that word being used that much? This length of time? Other than when 911 happened, we need to pray. But because 911 was an isolated incident, everybody started praying. And then when they built the memorial and everybody forgot about it, everybody went back to their old lifestyle. But now God has allowed something to hit the entire earth realm, even in foreign countries. And even if they're not fighting, uh, Black Lives Matter, they're over in Iraq and all those places and dropping bombs. France is being bombed. And then France turn around and retaliates on ISIS. What are you talking about? The world is at war. God has put this world world in chaos because he is ready for his end time revival and that's why I keep telling you be concerned but not be consumed because this right here is a movement of God this is not the act of the devil by himself this is the stirring up so that we can turn and say where is our God we can seek him like never before now heart should have went across that whole screen I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And when you're dealing with stuff like that, you have to be careful. Just like Peter did, God had to chastise him. And God had to let him know, when did you become the possessor of the Holy Ghost? When did you have the power to decide who get it and who don't? No, you're not going to do that because when I found you, you was cussing. Hey, man, somebody. Amen, somebody. You walked with me too. And I told you before the cock crows three times, you was going to deny me. And they found you cussing. Now, how is it that you're going to determine who's not worthy to have the Holy Ghost when your mouth was full of foul profanity? Oh, y'all, come on. We're so quick to look at somebody else. And we're so quick to determine who God won't use because of where they've been or because of what they've gone through. But you are, the last time I checked, your name was not Jesus. And you got to be careful of who we think we mark the X on and say people ain't going to be this. And this one can't be that. And that one can't be this. Because we think we control something. But God is the one that is in control. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. No, I feel this today. I feel this today. I feel this today so strong. You see, when you look at this, a scripture that God gave me, I don't know who I'm ministering to today. This right here is jumping off real hard. This is jumping off real hard. 
scripture came to mind. The scripture that God gave me about seven years ago. When I was going through a real bad turmoil situation. But um, it was really my transition. And that's what I call it, my transition. Because it is a thing that moved me from religion to relationship. Mm -hmm. It was a thing that moved me from a dying system to the power of God. It was a thing that, 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 that got me out of the politics of the church and got me into the sensitivity of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I said that. Yeah, I said that. That's exactly what I said. It's the thing that got me to understand that it wasn't just a white robe and all of that that caused me to be able to reach people and touch people. It was an awakening for me. It was an awakening because he allowed me to see what happens to people when they go through a hard time. He allowed me to lose everything that I had. He allowed me to go down to nothing. He allowed that because it was in that that birthed a different sensitivity to me for when people are going through and don't think they can make it. It is my job not to let you stay where you are. It is my job to help you to understand that you're passing through this thing and do not land in this in your emotions too long because time is passing you up. It is my job to tell you that while you are going through your change, you keep working, you keep doing what God has called you to do. I got a message and that message came to me from a very, very popular singer in the world. I mean a renowned triple, quadruple, platinum person. It didn't come to me from the church. It came to me from a person that don't even profess to be a Christian. And they said, tell Juanita Bynum, whatever she do, do not put her microphone down. If she got to go back to preaching in storefront churches, because this is going to pass. Are you hearing me? And so sometimes we go through things, but in the midst of us going through, we go and sit down and start licking our wounds and feeling sorry for ourselves. And we stop moving in that thing. We stop moving and all of a sudden, all of your agility to operate in the gift that God has given you, it begins to die and you begin to get rusty. But I'm not going to let you sit down. I'm not going to let you grab a hold to what the people are saying. I want you to grab a hold today to what God has said about you. My God, I feel this today. God has said something powerful about you. And God didn't make a mistake when he called every person on this page. And he told you what your talent was. He told you what your gift was. Your dreams, your visions to open up your stores or your McDonald's or whatever it is God has given you. He calculated all of your mistakes in everything he chose you to do. That's why what you do don't shock God. God ain't over here tripping. God ain't over here talking about, oh, well, you know, she did that or he did that. So you know what? I might as well just give up and go find somebody else. He didn't do it with David. Oh, hello. He didn't do it with David where somebody said, well, he did it with Saul. But the difference between David and Saul is Saul did not desire to be righteous. Saul did not desire to follow the instructions of the Lord when he had messed up. I told you yesterday what righteousness is. Righteousness is when the Lord brings you face to face with your imperfection and you make the decision to follow God out of that situation. It is your obedience that have caused you to now walk in righteousness. Saul did not want that. And when the prophet came to him and told him what God said to do, he did the opposite. He didn't do all of it. He did part of it. And therefore, God had to rip the kingdom from him. Because if you're not going to let me lead, then there is something in you that thinks you are the king of this earth. When I'm the real king, you're representing me. We are representing God. And as long as we show God that we are his representation in the earth, when we make mistakes, he is obligated to strengthen us. And help us to get the lesson. Are you hearing this today? Are you hearing this today? I keep telling you some of you all are too hard on yourself. And you hard on yourself because you listening to all that dumbness from people. You got to get that junk out of your ears. 
when God was, was doing what he was doing in my life, he sent me to Job 33 and 4. And some of y'all ain't going to forget this. You need to write this on your mirror. You need to write this down on your, in your cubicle and put it up at your desk. You need to put it on your dashboard. If you got to get a black magic marker and write it on a t-shirt and wear it. Job 33 and 4 says, it is he that have made me. It is he that have breathed the breath of life into me. Therefore, he inspires me. That's where I get my inspiration from. The person that breathed the breath of life in me. The person that made me. That's where I get my inspiration from. He is the one that inspired me. When I need to be inspired, I don't need to reach outside of God. I need to reach in God and get my inspiration. My God. Because this thing is divine. This thing that he's doing in you, I know it is. I tell you, nobody has me sitting here like this but God. Nobody. I'm canceling people. I'm talking about no, I'm canceling preaching engagements. My staff is like, are you sure? Do you know who that was? I, I can't go nowhere. I can't move right now. No, I can't. I just can't. Somebody's life is dependent on this. I have to be what God told me to be. I got to be on this air until he says different because he's pulling somebody through a transition. You coming through this thing. I know you are. And you're going to look back over these days and you're going to shake your head and say, my God, you loved me. My God, I thought that this was it. My God, I thought that there would be no way that I can get past where I am right now. But everybody that's listening to this message, I am telling you from the depths of the fibers of my soul that this right here is a transition. This is not your final stage. This is not where you're going to end up. It is not over. It is what God is doing to help you to learn a lesson that you have to teach. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? My God. You may say, well, you know what, it's getting, it's just getting so bad. But you know, when I was a flight attendant and I flew for Pet Am, I had a plant and they sent me on a trip and it was a long trip. And when I got back home, my plant was dead and all the leaves was brown. And so I went to throw the plant out. And when I went to throw the plant out, God spoke to me and said, do you know why this plant died? Do you know why these leaves are brown? And I said, because it's dead. He said, no, because the roots are dead. He said, the leaves are brown and falling off and cracking because the roots are dead. And that's what I heard the Lord just now say in my spirit to tell you that the reason why it's bad like this is because the root of that thing is dying. God is going to the root this time. There would be no fixing the leaf and then it comes back. God is going to the root of it. He's getting the root of that situation. And when the root is dying, everything starts looking ugly because God is killing it. Because he said this time, it cannot be a temporary fix for where God is taking you. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? It can't be temporary because it keeps coming back. So now God got to go to the root of the matter. To the root of the matter. He has to root it out. Yeah, that's going to be lesson number two tomorrow. I got to dig deeper in that. I just heard him say dig deeper into that. Dig deeper into that. Now, why is it that God has to get to the root of it? And I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes we grab a hold to the manifestation of something. And the manifestation of it now becomes our identity. I just said that. You cannot allow the manifestation of an ugly situation to be your identification. He just spoke a word right there. He just spoke a word right there. That's not who you are. It may be what happened, but that's not who you are. And if you were that, 
If in fact you were that, then why is the devil fighting you? Why is he fighting you so hard to remain there if that's really you? Because if it's you, then he could just leave you alone. But why does he keep fighting you? Why does he keep fighting you to keep your mind there? Why does he keep fighting you to keep your disposition there and your behavior there? Because he knows if you ever find out who you are, you are going to be a weapon that cannot be stopped against the acts of the devil. Are you hearing me? You are going to come full force for him. And who you now be have become is going to be the weapon that is unstoppable. The reason why you're still here is because you're unstoppable. You just won't snap out of it so you can understand who you really are in God. And when you, listen, when you walk around with that kind of behavior, when you walk around thinking like that, oh, you know what, I'm, you know, well, this, well, this is just me. No. No, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful of everybody around you. You got to be careful. And, I wrote this down because God was just talking to me over there at my desk. You got to be careful of the people that are around you. You have to be careful of the people that encourage you or allow you to stay in that kind of mindset. I wrote this down. I wrote this down. He said that talent and gifts and promises and destinies do not just happen. They do not just happen. They are cultivated. The seed is planted, but they are cultivated. So what then becomes a direct enemy? You got to be careful. I keep hearing that. You got to be careful. You got to be careful of people that are around you. I, I just keep hearing that. I keep hearing that. You have to be careful. Because do you not know that people benefit Offer you acting the fool. People benefit. This is a very competitive society. And it's subliminal. But it is. Because if they can keep encouraging you. Or, or let me just say this. Never discourage you. To take on a behavior that says. I'm, I'm jacked up. Then they benefit. Because they get a chance to manipulate you. Do you not know that the reason why the enemy don't want many of you that are watching me today to come into strength? Because when you are weak, then man decides your next move. Did you hear what I just said? When you are weak, man decides your next move. When you are weak, that's when people think that they can decide. What door is open for you? What door is shut for you? Then they can decide because now you need them. Now it's presented to you. I can help you. Or let me do this for you. And then you end up feeling like I'm doing this because they let me. I'm doing this because they allowed this. So now my allegiance is no longer to the will of God, but my allegiance is to them. And I told somebody, before I will let anybody manipulate me, I will go and live in a shelter. I will eat breadcrumbs. I will eat government cheese. Because the most valuable commodity that you have is when you stand as a captain of your own ship. When you stand as a person that know where you're going and know who God has called you to be. And you walk in that and you stay in that that's the greatest power that you have because if you can make things happen for other people you can make it happen for yourself but nobody wants you to realize who you are and they want to keep you in the dark and when you start getting strong and you start getting on your strength then the next thing the devil come to do is remind you of where you've been because that's another lie and that's another trick and that's how he operates. Because when he see that you done forgot it and you move it in your destiny and they can't do nothing else to pull you back. They got to remind you of where you've been. But where I've been is my lesson for me to teach. 
Oh no, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed of what it does. Are you hearing me? Is there anybody listening today? My God from Zion. You have divine connections waiting on you. Why are you waiting for somebody to give you a chance? You looking in the wrong direction. You looking in the wrong direction. Because it ain't listen. God don't need nobody to do you no favor. Because you already got favor. God just needs you to walk in that favor. So you can end up in the right place at the right time to meet the right person. Are you hearing God? Cornelius. God came to him. And spoke to him about Peter. And said there was somebody coming. Do y'all see this? Neither one of them knew each other. Neither one of them knew each other. But Peter had what Cornelius needed. And Cornelius had what Peter needed. Peter was carrying the word for the baptism of the Holy Ghost to the Gentiles. But at the same time, Cornelius was carrying the spirit of anti-prejudice. So while Peter was delivering a message of the Holy Ghost to Cornelius, Cornelius was responsible for getting Peter delivered from being prejudiced. Are y'all hearing me? When that divine connection come, it will not be a one-sided situation. It will not be somebody doing something for you and you low here on the totem pole. You would have what they need and they would have what you need. And it would be a divine connection and nobody will be able to manipulate and control nobody. Because it's a partnership. Is there anybody listening? Is there anybody listening? My God. My God, people. My God. Whew. You know, I just saw this thing so deep. It's just so... Manipulation is... is Manipulation is something. It, 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 that's a real demon. That's a real demon. That's a real demon. Because you know what I've seen? I've seen situations where people... Like, um, like if somebody don't want you to have something, they don't want you to have something and you in the presence of somebody that can make it happen and somebody don't want you to get it. See, that's why you got to watch it. Listen, 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 listen. Mm -mm, I got to get close to you right here. That's why you got to watch it with all that letting people push your buttons, letting people say things and do things to set you off. You got to watch that demon. Because that is not just designed for that moment. That right there is a testing of a demonic spirit of control. God, I thank you, Jesus. He has given this to me. You got to watch that demon because that's not, that's not isolated. That's practice. That demon is practicing on you. Sometimes when people uh, say things to ignite you and you go off, and there's certain things that they do and you go off, and there's certain things that they come at you with and you go off. And you don't understand why, why they keep on picking me like, at me like that. And why do people always pick me up? Because that demon is testing you. And that demon is testing you because it's monitoring your go-off ability. It's saying, when I push here, they act like that. When I push there, they act like that. When I say that, they act like that. So then, if they have been, become accustomed to the way you respond and the way you react to things, they already know that if they want to continue to control you and they want to continue to manipulate you, then when they get you in the presence of a sure door or a sure promise, they press that button and watch you go off and you lose opportunity. So it's a different kind of control. You have to watch the devil. When God is moving you into something prophetic and he's moving you into something divine, you got to watch every spirit because the devil will send somebody from out of nowhere. Somebody will pull up in a car that you didn't even see just so you can go off right in front of the person that you're going to meet. You got to watch the enemy. You got to watch the enemy. No, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Wow. Wow. Your power is being tested for your destiny. And so now 
when those buttons are pushed, you got to learn how to hold it. You got to learn how to say, God, no, mm -mm. that's not how I handle things. I'm not doing it like that. Because it's only then can you prove that you and God is the master of your own fate. Good Lord, have mercy. You know what? I read in a scripture that was so profound in the book of John, the 14th chapter and the 6th verse. When Jesus said, the Amplified Bible said, Jesus said, I am the real way. And I am the real truth. And I am the real life. Nobody comes unto the Father. What is he trying to say to us? Nobody, because how, how are we coming to the Father? We are coming to, to the Father as a complete work. Nobody comes to the Father with a complete work, meaning fulfilling my destiny, without coming through the real door and the real truth and the real life. People are not the real door. Jesus said, I am the door. Are you hearing me? And when you really believe that, you will find people doing things for you that hate your guts. They don't even like you, but they can't help themselves. Because when you make Jesus the door, he steps in to the fibers of man and he opened them up and make them give you a yes, even when they don't want to. Are you hearing that? Oh my God. When you ask of the Father, when you decide my business and my dream is going through this door, good Lord have mercy. My dream and my vision is only going to abide by this truth. Mm -hmm. And the way that I'm going to finish my course with joy, according to the book of Acts, I'm going to do it through this real life. And the real life is not religion. It's relationship. I live because I have relationship. I should have died. Everything about me should have died. I should have never been able to get up again. I shouldn't have never been able to raise my head up. I shouldn't have never been able to walk up. But God is the one that made me. He is the one that breathed the breath of life into me. Therefore, he has inspired me. He is the door. He is the real truth. The devil is a liar. The Bible said, let every man be a liar and let God be the truth. And he is the real life. It is in him I live and I move and I have my being. If I try to do it without him, I cannot live. I cannot move. And I cannot have my being. I will end up being what other people want me to be. I will end up being somebody else. And that's why it is imperative that I stay in him. Because in him is how I live. In him is how I move. My movement in the earth realm is in him. It is him. It's how I have my being. It's how I get mine back. It's how I get my life back. After the devil that tried to destroy it, it is how I get my mind back, my inspiration back, my drive back, my spirit back, my joy back, my contentment back, my peace back. That's the only way I can have it. i got to get in him. Are you hearing God? It'll never happen in people. It'll never happen in people. They want it to happen in them. They want it to happen in them. But you got to make God your source. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You have to make God your source. He has to be the ultimate drive. He has to be the ultimate way that you live and move and have your being. Are you hearing me? It's not over. He's getting you back. You said, well, you don't understand. People walked off from me. They were supposed to because they were never with you. Well, I can't believe I didn't left me. I didn't. They were supposed to because the end of that era was over. That part of your life is gone. Let it go. Because guess what? Greater is coming.
Oh my God. He doesn't take us backwards. Greater than you've ever had before. You think you've been blessed. You ain't been blessed yet. No. Sometimes God would allow the chaos to happen. So that he can help you to understand. And he can test your surroundings. So you will see firsthand from yourself who you had around you. Because you got to understand that God is going to use you to discern the people. Your discernment is going to a whole nother level. Because I had to learn how to departmentalize my friends. Because a lot of our friends are mountaintop friends, but very few of them are valley friends. Oh no, this is God. This is God. Because you coming into you. He's giving you back you. He's giving you back you. And today, the Lord is going to renew your fire. He's going to rekindle your flame. And he's going to let it burn again. Because you got purpose. Lift your hands up. We worshiping right now. I want you to hear this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The eyes of this young man.
Don't you forget your 21 day challenge. You can go to the website. I've developed a form there for you to fill out and put your weight in there because I'm praying for this. Every person that go and fill out that form, I'm going to pray for you doing this 21 day challenge because a 21 day challenge means that whatever I do for 21 days, it becomes my lifestyle. We're changing our lives. We're not just changing the moment. We're changing our lives. And also I want to encourage you. We're getting ready to go through the book. Praying from the how to get from the outer court, moving past the inner court, and into the most holy place where we get the job done. So you can go to the website. We've made it available on the website. You can go to the man with his thumb up. I need you to press that icon at JuanitaBynum.com. Write me through Friday at 4 a.m. Come down. I see your beat. 